Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to the Miscellaneous Debris Podcast with me, your host, the one and only, the Mad Chatter, Ryan M.K. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Uh, It's been a minute. It's been a minute. So to begin, an apology, because it's, it's, it's been a while since I have... Got on this mic to speak for the miscellaneous crew and crowd that loves to listen to the show. It's been a while since I have looked into your faith. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> but apologies. It's been two weeks since this pod has come out. Now I'll explain. Two weeks back, I had a pod ready. And I know this is a thing with me where every once in a while I disappear for a week and you're like, what the fuck's going on? Hey, it's not like this is all I have to do. It's not like this is, you know what? If I could just get paid to talk on the damn microphone, y'all would be getting podcasts all the fucking time. But I essentially do this for free. I have to do other work to take care of my family. Excuse me, my joints going out a little bit. Gotta, Gotta get a little more fire. So, you know, sometimes shit happens. Two weeks ago, I had a fucking pod ready. I recorded the entire first half of it. It was 15 minutes. And I was like, this is not good enough for my audience. This is not good enough for my crew, the mad caps, because it was going to end up being like a, a 30, 35 minute pod. So I was like, no, I need to add more. And then I just never finished it. And I was like, that's okay. I can miss a week. I'll get it next week because I'm going to do a big mid-year review because it's the beginning of July. We're halfway through 2021. And then I had a very rough week. Got a little sick. My tummy issues, I've talked about them before. I have severe stomach issues. I have irritable bowel syndrome. I've been scoped through the mouth, through the booty. I've been, they've checked. I I think I'm okay, but I I have some issues. And part of it's related to diet. I got to work on that shit. Admittedly, I need to do better in that regard. And as I get older, I'm trying to do a better job of taking care of myself. And that all, you know, pertains to it. But I did have a bit of a rough week and dealt with some stomach issues and lack of sleep. And I just, there was, I just, oh, it's just been a rough couple of weeks. Okay. And I'm still having trouble adjusting to the routine with the new job and all of that. So it's, it's just been a little rough and it's no excuses in retrospect. I should have just put out the shorter pod because then I would have been, you know, less stressed about the, the last week's pod. And I probably would have found a way to get it done. And then we wouldn't have missed it. Be- but no, but no. I got. A, I overthought it and was too worried about having one podcast that was a little bit short. And really, it would have been like, what, 10, 15 minutes shorter than a normal podcast. So why was I fretting about it? I don't know. But I did. And it led to a two-week absence of the podcast, which I very much apologize for. And I'll try not to let that happen again. <laughs> but as you know with me, until I get, until I get to a point where somebody is going to pay me to just do this, Or I make enough money elsewhere and have the free time to, you know, until I get to a point, uh, uh, you know, where I'm a little more stable and have more free time, there's always a chance I'll miss a week here and there, you know, which might be a big deal if I had like thousands of people listening, but I'm pretty sure the crew of Madcaps is, uh, well, in the hundreds at best case, (laughs) in the 100s with best case. (laughs) Anyway, so, but I have been enjoying the new job. It's a, you know, it's nice working in the cannabis industry, being out of the restaurant industry. I spoke about it before, but it is very nice because I hate the restaurant. It, It just, everything about, and just so you know, people, just so you know, if you like to eat at restaurants at some point in your life, At some point in your life, you have eaten food off of the floor because it's been served to you off the floor. And I'm not trying to gross anybody out. It's just a fact. It's just a fact. Oh, shit. Hold on. Hold on. That make a difference? It does make a difference. I got this blanket that hangs over this part of the wall and covers the door. And I feel like there is a difference. I forgot to hang it up. But when it's hanging up, I feel like there's a little bit less echo. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. Or what, what, what the hell was I talking about before I 
interrupted myself before I got distracted with my easily distracted self. <sighs> food, eating food off the floor. Because see, if you worked in the restaurant, inevitably at some point you've been working with old ass Fred who drops a chicken tender on the floor, right? And then you gotta, and then he picks it up immediately and throws it right back in the fucking fryer basket, right back into the grease. And, and then he looks around at all the witnesses, you know, and he's like, that grease is about 450 degrees. It'll kill anything they got on that shit. You know what I'm talking about? And it's true. It's real shit. That happens. But don't be grossed out. Don't worry because, you know, the five second rule, three second rule, whatever it is, a good cook will have the food off of the floor within two seconds. Okay. Now, some people, when you talk about the five second rule, there's actually some scientific evidence to that. I, I, I had read about it one time. I probably should have read about it more. This is more of a spontaneous conversation, <laughs> not something I made a note for. But it's not like, you, you know, you drop a piece of food on the floor. It's not a fucking magnet for bad shit. It's it, as in, it doesn't just vacuum it, right? It's not like the food hits the floor and it's like, and it just all vacuums right up. To, no, it takes some time for germs and bacteria to get on. It's, I imagine it's much more like the chicken, like a piece of food hits the ground. Poof, and then germs and bacteria, they're startled looking around. Look what the fuck was that? Oh my God. Did that thing crush Kenny? Oh my God. It killed Kenny. Oh my God. Wait, what is that? Is that, is that, is that chicken? I think that's fucking chicken. Dude, we should go check that shit out. Don't worry about Kenny later. It makes sense. It makes logical sense. It would take a little time for the food, for the bacteria and the germs, whatever, to get, to make their way to the chicken. Even if they're right there, they got to get on the chicken. I don't know. I don't know. It makes sense to me. <laughs> Sorry, that's a little bit I'm working on for stand up. I got a lot of experience in the restaurant industry, so I tend to incorporate that into my stand up stuff. This a little topic I was thinking about, thinking on. So that's where we're at with that. It's nice being out of that industry. And I'm enjoying the cannabis industry so far. And the days aren't too bad. It's just, you know, it's four very long days. And uh, I don't, it's, it's a long time. It's kind of a drive to get there. So I have to wake up early, get ready, make the drive. You know, I always go a little early in case shit happens. So inevitably, there's time to sit there before work, which is great for getting high. And then you go through the long day, and then you got to drive home. My drive home is usually in traffic. So it turns into like a 14-hour day, and then there's not a lot, of, a lot of time left. You know, in the evening, come home and fucking have dinner with the fam, hang out for a little bit, shower, get high. It's time to go to bed, you know? So it leaves little time for me to get a lot of my creative stuff done during my four-day work week. So it's usually the other three days I got to get shit done. But that's also the other three days I got to get everything else done that I can't get done in my life the other four days of the week. So when I'm working, so I just still adjusting, but work, I have been liking it. And as I mentioned, I've been working on my stand-up, getting back into the routine so I can go hit those open mics this summer. And I was getting to a point where I was like, I, I need a little bit of a break from the stand-up. A, because I'm, I'm running out of new stand-up to listen to. And B, I don't want it to affect, to affect too much of what I'm doing. So I had to switch it up. And I'm like, okay, I got the podcast. I can go through those pretty quick. But then I stand up. So what? Audiobooks. And let me tell you, I... I'm a big lover of books. I love to read. Always have loved to read. I love diving into a book, imagining the world, the characters. I do a thing where I often put like actors' faces to a certain character. So I have a face for that character when I'm reading the book. But I don't have fucking time to read books anymore. I just don't. I don't have the fucking time. I used to, I, and I haven't had time for a while, but I used to at least be able to read at night. And, and not only did I enjoy reading at night, but it would help me get to sleep. Now I'm at a point where pretty much when my head hits the pillow, I go to sleep. So 
And I got so much else going on, I don't have time to read. So this has been a blessing being able to get into some books without having to read them. And, and, and I've done audio books before. I remember we used to listen to the Jurassic Park audio book when, when we used to ride with my dad from back and forth from Iowa to Colorado. We used to do a lot of that. So I, I dig the audio books. And um, it's, it's nice because I'm getting in some books that I like and, and I'm getting them in without you know having to find the time to read them because I'm just listening to them at work and it's great. So I've got to catch, I've got to read some, you know, go through some books that I haven't read in a long time. And it's, it's been fun. So I was going to talk a little bit about like favorite authors, favorite book series, stuff like that. I mean, Stephen King, obviously a lot of people are big fans of him and, you know, I dig all the classics, you know, it stand by me, Cujo, Cujo's fucked up It and Cujo, the books. I mean, the movies are crazy. The books, you do you got to read the books. Um, I remember specifically in it. There's this part with the serial. You just got to read. If you haven't read like those books, <laughs> or maybe that was in Cujo. But if you haven't, it's been a while for those. I might have to audiobook those motherfuckers. But Stephen King's got some good shit. And uh, I like a lot of his newer stuff. I, I haven't got to the Dome. Um, I would really like to check that out. And I know there was a TV series at one point on Under the Dome. Maybe that's it. Um, but then there's this book, Cell. If you haven't read Cell, this is a really good underrated Stephen King book. And it's basically where a cell phone or a signal gets sent through cell phones and it basically zombifies people and it gets done at one time or it gets sent out. And basically anybody who was on their phone at that time got zombified. And then if you ever put your you know, ear to the phone with the signal, it would zombify you. It was something about the signal. And it's a crazy ass book. And then there's Dreamcatcher that was turned into a movie. I think Cell was too, but uh, Dreamcatcher. And that was a hell of a book and movie. Um, so I like his newer stuff as well. But uh, The Stand is by far, by far, my st favorite Stephen King book of all time. I love The Stand. I, I loved the old. I've heard they've, there's a new version of it, a TV series or something. Um, I'll have to look into that. But the old one was really good. Gary Sinise, who was who else was in it? Um, there's some good actors in that. In that one, I think Gary Sinise was probably the biggest one in there. One of them, he played Stu. But anyway, that's some good stuff. I own that on DVD. And then I like Dean Koontz a lot. Um, Phantoms, that's always badass. Uh, I loved it. The wife and I um, watched Jay and Bob's Strike Back, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back a little while back, and. Uh, it's funny because there's several times throughout that movie when they talk about Ben Affleck being awesome in the movie Phantoms. It's so good. I love that shit. Anyway, um, Moonlight Bay series. This is really good. It's about a dude named Christopher Snow. Can't be out in the direct sunlight because of his condition. So he spends a lot of time at night. And uh, his parents like worked at this like scientific lab or his mom did or something, but some weird shit's going on there. And he invest, starts investigating shit after his dad dies. It's, it's a really good book. And it turned into a series. Uh, I believe the first one's called Fear Nothing. And then the next one is Seize the Night, Carpe Noctum. You know, Carpe Diem sees the day, Carpe Noctum sees the night. I've always liked Carpe Noctum because I'm much more of a night owl myself. My wife and I talk about all this, this all the time. Like, I much prefer to be outside when it's dark than when it's light. But uh, I know you got to have the sun, the vitamins. <laughs> but it, I really do. I'm, I'm a night dude. I like the night. So I very much connect with the one Mr. Christopher Snow, even though I do go out during the day and I am allowed to because I don't have a condition like him. I can connect with feeling one with the night. But it's a really good, really good book. So the third one still hasn't come out yet. It's supposed to be a trilogy, but uh, that's good stuff right there. And then Strangers. If you've never checked out Strangers, this fucking book is amazing. It just follows these different people in these different areas across the country. And they start having dreams and weird shit happening to them. And just eventually they all end up coming together. And it's just a crazy ass story. Uh, you'll have to check it out. Have to check it out. And then Michael Crichton. I was a big fan of him. May he rest in peace. Obviously the Jurassic Park stuff. He did Jurassic Park, The Lost World. He did uh, Sphere, Congo, which obviously also turned into movies. Um, 
I love me some Congo. That's some good shit. <laughs> Congo is a badass movie. And then he has some of his newer stuff, like Before He Died was really good. Um, I'm actually reading State of Fear right now, which is interesting because it does kind of take the, the um, approach that global warming is not the threat it was supposed to be. And I imagine back when he read, there was a lot more um, controversy around this subject because there is some evidence that like, I mean, based on the planet and the way it is, it's gone through a lot of climate changes through throughout its time. Um, and so, it, you know, there's going to be changes, but I think when you start to see the damage that the pollution is causing, when you, you know, over time, we've really been able to get a grasp on just what the deal is with climate. And I, I think with, I mean, it, you know, the way temperatures rising and, and just everything that's going on. And even if some people want to counter that it'll be many years before anything bad happens or that it was going to happen anyway, even if humans aren't polluting, like you're fucking stupid. If you don't think, if you don't think, even if it was 100% fact that shit was going to happen anyway, and it wasn't going to happen for a while, you can't look at it and say, Oh, we're not pushing it along with the shit that we're doing because it's pretty fucking obvious, but it is an interesting book because it does take a look at the other side of things as in, you know, there are people out there eco-terrorists and that's basically what it's it, it, it's these people trying to stop an eco-terrorist group um and they're trying to make shit happen around the world uh to basically back up the climate change idea or theory and and so it, it, you gotta believe there is shit like that i mean even there's that you got there are bad good guys yeah <laughs> i guess is the way to put it you know so it's a pretty crazy book um, there's one called Prey, and this one is about nanotechnology, and this lab creates these, uh, like, nano camera swarms for um, the military, but they end up using this predator-prey program, and it doesn't go very well. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> then you got Next. That's an insane book. Timeline uh, goes back to the medieval times and uh, a lot of good stuff, but those are some of my top um authors as far as guys that I, uh, um, you know, really like to read and there's nothing against women. I just, <clears throat> I've got some, a woman coming up. Um, I just, I, I'm working on expanding what I read because I very much for a lot of my life have kind of like, I've always been big on, uh, King and Crichton. And then, um, at a point I added the Koontz material in there, but I've kind of, I mean, I've gotten into some trilogies, which I'm going to talk about, but I've never really branched out as far as um, a lot of other uh, well-known authors. I mean, my dad was a big fan of Anne Rice and uh, the interview with the vampire stuff. And I've always wanted to go back and check that shit out uh, at some point. And I think I might do that because I do dig vampire stuff and I do need to get some more, you know, some more female writers in my, in my reading repertoire. So, um, but as far as the, you know, trilogies, I mean, Hunger Games, is fucking amazing. It, even though, you know, it's like, it's, it, it's written both Hunger Games and Maze Runner. Those two trilogies that I really, really enjoy. The books are great, but the movies uh, are done pretty well also. Um, and it's, it's, it's strange because these are like young adult books, you know, so they're not written it, you know, as well or skillfully. I, I don't know if I want to say it like that, but they're not up to the level that like a Stephen King, um, a Michael Crichton, because especially Crichton, he adds a lot of science and facts and things like that into his writing. So there's a lot of shit with, with the Crichton material. There's a, there's a lot of stuff in there um, along that goes along with the story. And uh, so, you know, it, those guys, those they, there's just a difference, right? And so despite being like, more targeted for young adults the the books are really good and the movies are really good uh for both those trilogies and then you got his dark materials which i absolutely i love fantasy sci-fi stuff like that and, and so his dark materials was just an awesome trilogy to read and so far i've really enjoyed the series still on season one uh it just like the Mandalore, this this new work routine really put like a bunch of my like TV watching. Well, and and the NBA and NHL playoffs 
coming around that kind of put a, a bit of a pause on my show watching too but that shit's kind of wrapping up i'm starting to get into my work routine so i think i'm going to get back to watching those shows but yes her, his dark materials is fantastic um and then i like a lot of the star wars stuff right i did i was reading um uh, or i did some audiobooks of some of the star wars stuff and there's some really interesting things if you're a big star wars fan and you want to know more about the star wars universe you really need to check out the extent like uh uh, uh that you know just the whole universe you need to check out some of those other books there's some really good stories along of course there's stuff that follows like luke down his path and things like that but i really enjoy getting into the different stuff with the sith lords um you know darth reven reading about him there's a trilogy with him there's a darth bane trilogy which i just listened to at work that shit is phenomenal and uh, the reason i like some of the old sith stuff is because if you go you know, you if you're a Star Wars fan, you know that when it comes to the Sith Lords, they have two all the time, right? It's the rule of two. But you know that, um, I believe it's Yoda, one of the episodes, is that there's only two, there is always one, but one master and one apprentice. There's always two. And uh, that's the rule of two. And with the Darth Bane trilogy, you get to kind of see where that started because back in 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 the history of star wars in the past there were actually sith academies where you had many sith masters and many sith apprentices and students and and darth bane comes along and realizes that no that and he learns some things that he finds from a holocron from darth reven and um and and he realizes that, no, you, you know, you're trying to might, match might with might. So you're trying to get all these Sith Lords because you think numbers versus number, you'll, you'll win that way. But it's not true because that's not the way of the Sith. The Sith is to be cunning and, and, and manipulative and lie in the weeds in the background and work from secrecy. And, <clears throat> and so it's, it's just such good stuff. And, uh, so I highly suggest if you're in a Star Wars looking at some of that stuff, especially there's some crazy ass books um, with like with where that are horror Star Wars story stories, basically. And there's this one called Red Harvest, which I actually just finished a few days ago. And it's basically there's a planet with a Sith Academy and the head Sith master there basically um, tries to create this. um spell that will basically give him eternal life and he basically creates zombies and all the students and sith lords so basically you got a bunch of sith zombies running around <laughs> it's the craziest shit so like i said i highly highly suggest if you're into star wars and love that kind of thing check out some of that uh, you know, other material that's out there that's not really related to the movies. So it's good stuff. I, the Darth Plagueis book, that's a really good book. Um, you know, if you if you like Revenge of the Sith, you hear Palpatine talking about Darth Plagueis. That book is a phenomenal. There's a lot of good stuff out there. Uh, but then when it comes to other like book series, J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter. Now she can't, she seems like a bit of a cunt if you've been following with some of the shit she says, but uh, the Harry Potter books are amazing. Um, I love the movies. The, there's a few of them. I think they could have done a much better job, obviously. Um, but overall, very good job. Books, movies, Lord of the Rings. Ah, it's just one of my favorites. It, just the whole J.K. Rowling. Um, it's just some of my favorite stuff, period. I'm a big fan of the medieval times. It, when I had my brother on a few weeks back and we were talking about, um, you know, past lives and things. And I mentioned how I have the little patch of hair on the front and um, my back is on, on my ribs and, uh, and then on my back. And it's the exact same spot. Like that marks where I was like shot or impaled <laughs> or something. And uh, I just have this strong connection. Uh, my wife and I talked about it. Like my wife it has this strong connection with like the seventies, like the, the hippie feel and just peace, love, you know, everybody get high and just hang, you know, that's kind of her element. And me, I have this strong connection with the very distant past in the medieval times, you know, when it was all horses and swords and, you know, struggling to survive. And it, I have for some reason, a strong attachment with that. And I, I just, as I have a strong attachment with like the future with like space. And that's why I dig, you know, the sci-fi stuff too. So, you know, that's why some of my favorite shit is like the star Wars 
space stuff and then the lord of the rings medieval stuff it's just it's great and uh it you know a lot of, uh, like a lot of um tolkien's like additional stories and some of the extra stuff he has going uh with with the uh um with like it, the the whole middle earth because he basically he created this whole fucking you know place middle earth and then he creates all these different groups these different characters and it, it's just it's amazing how he did it so you've got the hobbit which starts it all out right but then he adds these different kinds of you know um these different kinds of, of stories, additional stories, where you meet other characters. And the great thing about the Hobbit movies is that they took a lot of these additional stories and weave them in to the Hobbit trilogy, which is something I thought was fucking great. Okay. And yeah, I, I just, I, I think it's great. And then you move on to the actual Lord of the Rings series. And that shit's just amazing. They got the new series coming out on Amazon Prime. And this shit's going to focus a lot more. Uh, on the period before Lord of the Rings. So I'm very interested in, in this um, to see what happens with a lot of that. It's going to be good stuff. Uh, the new Amazon Lord of the Rings series. I think we're going to see some great stuff, but I, I think Middle Earth is a real cool place. Tolkien created, you know, just great characters and, and environments. And it's just, it's a wonderful place world to dive into. You know, it's amazing. I love it. And the people of Middle Earth, if you ask me, they got it right. I mean, yeah, they deal with Sauron in the ring, but I mean, they, they just got to be able to chill. They got their different groups. They're doing their thing. You know, there's mushrooms, there's pipe weed, like, <laughs> like the hobbits had it right. Like we, we're going to eat mushrooms and smoke weed. That's what we're we going to do. I think I mentioned that before, but I digress. Obviously some stuff happened while we were away. Um, you know, the, there's a Florida building collapse, which, uh, you know, it's unfortunate, obviously. Um, but it just goes to show, like, you got to wonder how much care is taken with everything. I can tell you, just me personally, uh, my wife and I, uh, since we've been together, we haven't lived in a place that hasn't been run by a slumlord, by someone who gives two shits. Um I, the first apartment we had was terrible. Then we moved into a house. Uh, I remember the oven broke and the, the landlord told us she'd bring us a, a, a toaster oven, a little toaster oven, um, pff, instead of as opposed to getting the fucking oven fit. Like it's shit like that. And uh, the place we live in now, the, just the lack of, it, it was bad. We moved in and then after we moved in, we realized, oh, they did a shitty job putting this carpet in here and all this stuff. So it's just, it's been terrible. It, it, it's just, so you got to want if, if we're being hit on the lower left, a building like that, like you got to wonder how, how well some of that shit's being maintained and whatnot, you know, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough, it's scary stuff. You just got to hope, you know, I'd like to think shit like this would, I mean, you know, we had the terrorist attacks and they ran at 9-11 and they've ramped up security at the airport. Like when shit like this happened, we need really we should be a lot more proactive as opposed to reactive. You know, we should be making changes before this shit happens as, as opposed to and keeping up on shit. But this is what happens. Shit gets neglected. Bad things happen. And then reaction. But you have that. Which is kind of insane. Um. But then, you know, you kind of look at what else is good. I mean, I'm trying to figure out, I, I'll be honest. I'm trying to figure out a good way to transition because I had forgotten about the Florida building collapse. To be, and I wanted to put it in here in my notes, but I put it in a weird place because now it's surrounded by all the sports stuff. And I feel weird transitioning from, I didn't think it through, obviously, when I added that in there. So we're just going to awkwardly transition to the to the playoffs. And I guess we can kind of make a connection because Tampa Bay is in Florida and the Tampa Bay Lightning won the Stanley Cup. That shit's over. It was not the most fun Stanley Cup. Uh, I hate the Tampa Bay Lightning. <laughs> um but it looks like a, they're going to lose a bunch of players. So they shouldn't be as good next year. But fucking Tampa Bay. But the NBA, 
The NBA Finals is going good. I, I like this. Phoenix won the first couple of games, but Milwaukee, they won last night. It's two to one. I think it's going to be a good series. Might even go seven. I could use a good, you know, seven game NBA Finals series. And then you got the Major League Baseball All Star game being here in Denver, Colorado at Coors Field. And why is that? Because they took it out of Atlanta after, uh, you know, all the voting laws shit. And um, so now it's here. And apparently the cops came across some individuals in a hotel uh, and they found a bunch of guns and body armor and like over 100 rounds of ammunition. And one of these cocksuckers was on Facebook a couple of days ago talking about how he was going to go out in a big way. Um, so that shit's a little scary being that it's here in Colorado. I mean, that's shit's scary in general. That people, because of the All-Star game being moved, would want to then go to the new location of said All-Star game and start shooting shit up. What the fuck is wrong with people? I I just... I don't even... I just... uh, uh, Oh, the kids are getting too loud. The kids... I'm going to have to go talk to them. They have fucking assholes in their gun. Yeah, Gonna go out in a big way, assholes. <sighs> we also had the UFO report, uh, as predicted. That came out, and there was not, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. I mean, they kind of admit stuff. That's that's about as far as we got. Uh, largely inconclusive was uh, what they came up. But basically, we don't know. We don't fucking know. Yes, you're right. There's some shit out there. We don't know. A lot of people are thinking that's bullshit. You know more than you're telling, and they probably do. But um, I came across this. Uh, now I shouldn't say came across it because I actually, it's actually a podcast I enjoy. But podcast UFO. It's with Martin Willis, and he had a guest on Preston Dennett. And um, this dude was originally a non believer, but then uh, too much happened to change him, and he had his own sightings. And he honestly believes that, that we're seeing a lot more sightings and all of this because the ETs themselves were pushing for disclosure. They want the government to come clean and uh, they're kind of you, you know ramping up it's at the activity uh to make themselves more known and kind of force the government into disclosure uh but be- before they do it themselves and um so they're trying to give the government time and if they're not going to do it he believes the ets will and i think that's it's it's a, a very interesting theory and it does make some sense um so it'll be interesting to see It'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, But yeah, definitely a little disappointing on the UFO report. Um, But this guy, but this guy was, if you have a chance, check it out. Podcast UFO with Martin Willis. Uh, This Preston Den dude has a lot of good stuff to say. And um, he believes a lot of this is tied to a lot of the ET's activities tied to uh, the climate and, and that we're being we're at a state now where it's a pretty critical point when it comes to the climate. And uh, so he thinks that's a big belief, because if you look at a lot of encounters and things like that, there's for years there's been in these um encounters with aliens that people have had ets that people have had they claim a lot of like the aerial school in zimbabwe you know people saying they said take better care of your planet you're fucking your planet up basically so it, it it that's a common theme in um experiences with ets uh supposed experience with ets it's a common theme is that they preach to us to take better care of our planet so Mm. Yeah. It's uh, definitely an interesting theory. Uh, and, you know, I kind of hope he's right. I kind of like to see some fucking aliens before I die, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Speaking of the climate, we got a killer heat wave. Um, well, climate weather is different. Sorry. Let's make that distinction. But due to, I would say, uh, partly that the climate change and global warming, things like that, um, it's hot. Vegas just hit a new record high. I mean, it's a fucking Vegas. Vegas gets hot. And, you know, climate is different than weather. But when we're getting, when we're getting fucking <laughs> shit like this, where it gets this hot, where a place like Vegas is setting a record, um, 
Yeah. Planet seems like it might be a little too hot, but uh, we got a long ways to go with that. A lot of work to do, but you know, I'll, I'll try and take advantage of it. Uh, we'll go out on the hot days and we'll fill up the water. I just got a bunch of more water balloons. So we'll, we'll go out and have some more water fights. Let me and the boys love the water fights. We got some pretty cool water guns and water blasters. Sorry, we call them blasters, not guns. Water blasters got some pretty cool water blasters, some water balloons. Uh, yeah. Yeah. we we'll just have to make a hell of a summer of water fights. We'll, we'll, just, we'll be doing a lot of that. I imagine if it's going to be hot as fuck. <laughs> so yes. So yes. But we're going to take a quick break, take a quick break. And then I want to come back and talk a little uh, uh, mid-year review, kind of review uh, where we've, what we've been through so far. What's, what major events have happened this year? Because everybody was so ready to get 2020 over with, right? And it just seems like, uh, you know, as much as we wanted to get rid of 2020 and go into 2021, um, 2021 hasn't been all that much better. So <laughs> we'll get into that next. Twenty twenty was a hell of a year, right? Can you just imagine if the murder hornets had become like a real thing, you know, like a real, real thing, like a super threat, along with COVID? It'd be crazy. It would be fucking. Can you imagine the PPE you'd have to wear to go outside if there were gangs of murder hornets frolicking about? Do that. I can imagine the disinformation campaign for that. I don't know. I don't know. I think a lot of those anti-maskers uh, would be a lot more into uh, the uh, murder hornet PPE, <laughs> even though it would be way worse than a mask. Be like a bio suit. You'd have to cover yourself. Fucking murder hornets. <coughs> it's, a government, it's a government conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. The murder hornets really, just uh, they don't exist. They don't exist. Ah! murder on it. So 2020 passed. Everybody's like, bring on the 2021. And it's been kind of crazy. Maybe not quite as crazy, but it's still been crazy. I mean, let's take a look at things, shall we? I mean, it began really the year with the Capitol riot, right? <sighs> Which Republicans are, of course, now downplaying. Uh, uh, but if you saw that video that was trending on Twitter, hashtag arrest Trump now. I can't remember who put out the video, but uh, it's it's amazing to see some of the shit that's on that video. Uh, those people were absolutely vicious towards the cops at the Capitol, towards everybody. So these motherfuckers claim uh, a Blue Lives Matter, but then they beat on fuck. It, it just, it blows my mind. It's It's a little bit terrifying to see that shit. But now the Republicans are downplaying it, right? <laughs> they claim a lot of the Black Lives Matter stuff, rioters, looting and rioting, saying all this stuff. But the Capitol riot, no big deal. I would say this, ask yourself this. How many cops were killed during the Black Lives Matter protests? How many cops were killed during the Capitol riot? I'll wait. I'll wait. We also had Joe Biden inaugurating. And, you know, you know me, not a huge fan, but uh, anyone but Trump is what I said. <laughs> and uh, Biden's done all right, man. He did really good with the vaccines at first, pushing them, you know, hit it, hit some of his, uh, his marks that he wanted to hit, got it back in the Paris Climate Agreement undid some of the dumb shit Trump's done uh, with immigration and all sorts of shit. He's done an all right job. 
Unfortunately, vaccinations have died off. Not even 50% of the country has been vaccinated. You got all the fucking Trumpers. And then you got non-Trumpers that are just kind of fucking worried because, you know, it was a pretty quick vaccine. Um, the FDA has, they're close to approving it, but they haven't yet. Um, there's a lot of factors. And now they're wondering if like there's a couple of deaths and younger people that have been caused because of the vaccine. So it is a bit of a scary thing, right? But the data is there. I mean, you just see Fauci. Fauci's all sorts of fucking frustrated and pissed over this. Like he doesn't fucking get it. I'm with you, Fauci. I don't get it either. I don't get why some people are being assholes and stupid and not understanding the benefit of this shit. Especially with some of the, like when you get someone like Cole Beasley, like, Everybody's all science now. Whatever happened to God's will? Fuck you and fuck God's will. Pay attention to science. That's some real shit. Some real shit. And this motherfucker won't put a vaccine in his body, but what do you, uh, how much shit do you think he's put in his body for football? Right. Oh, and now my kids are being loud again. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to record late night like I usually do. So I'm recording this during the day. The missus is at work. And I'm here with the boys and they're, they're supposed to be, you know, being quiet, chilling on their pads. And for the most part, they've done a great job. But now they're getting rowdy. Now they're getting rowdy. <laughs> oh, now I'm going to have to go talk to them. Now, now they just just. Yep. Those kids, those kids. And I also realized I actually had our monitor up here. So that was probably adding to the loudness of the kids. <laughs> uh, that's all right. You know how I do things. I'm not trying to be picture perfect here. Shit happens. Sometimes you have a podcast where you get the kids making some noise. It's <laughs> all right. They're getting antsy. Might be time to might be about time to go do some some water fighting if you know what I mean. But anyway, I continue. I continue. So Biden, yeah, <sighs> the COVID situation. It's the ugh. it's unfortunate. All this going on while COVID variants are scampering about, and you know we did we've hit some milestones with the COVID uh, in twenty twenty one. U.S. was the first to hit five hundred thousand deaths. And the global death number has went past 5 million. It's, uh, but yeah, there's still some people who want to, yeah, <laughs> fucking idiots. Anyway, so Biden, COVID's still, still rolling. You got the Myanmar coup, of course. Uh, the Myanmar military detained its uh, elected leader, Aung San Suu Kyi and took over the country. Um, obviously, citizens protesting and the military used force. Hundreds have been killed, including children. Um, yeah, so that, that shit still, still got bullshit like that going on across all over the world. Um, there's a lot of that shit going on, and it's just crazy to me. I, winter, we had a bit of a rough winter. Uh, there were severe winter storms, right? And particularly in Texas, where because of how Texas set up, they uh, dealt with a little, a lot of power loss and a lot of lives lost. And it was just a pretty bad fucking winter. Um, and, uh, you know, then we had the climate change summit, the virtual climate change summit on Earth Day, which was good to see. It's good to see, you know, Biden got us back in the Paris Climate Agreement and then we're, we're involved in this. And it's good to see the leaders talking about it. Does that mean anything is going to get done? Who knows? And will anything get done in time? Who knows? But at least it's becoming more of a serious conversation. Um, and that's good to see. Uh, even though, you, you know, you still got a chunk of this fucking country that just... <laughs> 
And then back to violence, you got the Israel-Palestine conflict and, and conflict, conflict and you know, these people, these groups have been fighting for fucking ever. Um, so this is just the latest in, in the drama between them. And um, Israel's really kind of been a bit of a shithead in this situation. And their leader, uh, Ben Netanyahu, not sure if I say that right, but he is now out as the prime minister in Israel. So there's a new guy stepping in. And um, hopefully um, that can help with with matters a little bit. And then uh, we also saw throughout this year, you know, Russia continue their shit. Uh, you got the Ukraine situation and then Russia threatening NATO to stay out. Um, <laughs> which is pretty fucking ballsy. And then you got the whole Alexei Navalny, situ- Navalny situation. He's jailed. Uh, possibly near death, somewhat worried about, but now he's been labeled an extremist and he, the groups he's associated with extremist groups now. Um, so it's, it's uh, all because he was a critic of Putin, you know, he did an M- interview Putin did with uh, NBC where he was uh, um, partly understanding, but partly critical of the Black Lives Matter movement, but was fully supportive of the Capitol rioters. <laughs> like, I just, again, I, it, it's, just, it's funny language. We talked about this previously. They're going to start calling protesters rioters. But what are, were the rioters? The rioters were protesters? I did, like, it, it, if you look at the two situations, when were Black Lives Matter's protesters beating a cop to death? Show me. It's, it's just... I don't, I don't fucking get it, but it makes sense that Republicans say shit like we'd rather have Biden or Putin as president than Biden because they're fucking stupid. And they talk about, they talk about, we must be in a communist country if they're trying to make everybody get vaccines. They don't realize in places that actually are communist countries, they're begging for more vaccines. As a matter of fact, most countries are dying to have the amount of vaccine, to have the availability to get a vaccine that we have in this country. And yet, half the, not even half the country is vaccinated. The idiocy and ego of citizens of this fucking country is amazing. It's all, it's jaw dropping. It's it. <sighs> but whatever. I, I, what do you do? I'm sure we'll have plenty more to talk about on on Trump and the Trumpers in that situation next week because they got the whole uh, republic another P- Republican convention CPAC whichever fucking one it is I don't know I don't care and he's going to be closing the show so we'll see what this motherfucker has to say we'll talk more about that for sure next week is yes I will be here next week I will be here next week for sure. And we'll get the show going early because next weekend, actually, Mr. Taco Cat is taking a little vacay coming out to Colorado. It's going to be a good time. He's going to come. It's actually Mr. Taco Cat's birthday today. So let's throw out a happy birthday to the Mr. Taco Cat. So, yeah, we got um, a lot of good stuff coming up. We're going to do the Renaissance Festival. That should be fun. I fucking, again. I have a strong attachment to the medieval times. So I love the fucking Renaissance Festival. I love the different comedy acts. I love the fade, the jousting. That's a, that's a fun show. I know it's, you know, it's all fake and, and you could, they don't do the greatest job sometimes, but it's still fun. It's still fun. And uh, it's going to be a good time. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to head up to Breckenridge for a few days and, you know, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. These good times. So, yes, yes. But for now, we're gonna get this uh, get this fucking tea party wrapped up. I think get this fucking tea party wrapped up. The kids are getting obnoxious. <laughs> and let's face it, I've got other stuff to do. I've, I'm getting ready also to record another podcast tonight. If you're into fantasy football stuff, please do. Make sure to check out my other podcast, the Dynasty Wonderland podcast. That will be out, yes, tomorrow, tomorrow or Wednesday. But it's going to be a good week. I got a week of work, 
finally feeling like I'm getting into my routine. And then next week, I got a few days off, hang out with my brother while he's in town. We'll, we'll get that Ren Fest in. We're going to get some disc golfing in. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time. We're going to grill some steaks Saturday, grill us some steaks. We're going to have a good time. So I'm looking forward to the Taco Cat and the Mad Chatters days of fun next week. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Other than that, I just, not a lot going on, right? The playoffs are coming to an end. We're just getting into summer. I mean, it's, like I said, I'm going to spend a lot of time outside. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm very interested in what Trump will say in that speech, though, because I want to see if there's any more hints of him believing he'll still get in the White House by August. Those fuckers are still talking about it, despite Trump having tour dates out there for during that time. Like he's not going to be going on tour if he's in the White House. So clearly, Trump doesn't believe he's going to be in the White House. But will he say anything about it? Is it? These fucking assholes. Country's going to hell in a handbasket. And with the way the climate's going, I like I'm I'm just saying. Watch out, Canada. I see an invasion of southerners coming. <laughs> it's true though, man. And woman. As time goes on, those colder climates. Just might be the better place to be, you know? But I digress. I digress. It's been a good show. It's been a good show, I think. It's probably, again, not a super long one, uh, but I, I kind of ran through that mid year review maybe quicker than I meant to. But, you know, we've talked about this stuff, right? Throughout the past several weeks. So it's not like anything new. Just kind of recapping all the crazy shit that's happened in the past six months. And now how it hasn't been all that less crazy than fucking 2020. We might be, not be locked down or anything, but we definitely, it's, it's, it's been a wild year, I would say. A bit of a wild year. <sighs> and we will see what the future brings. But I'm ready to get through the rest of summer. It is probably my least favorite uh, season, although I enjoy that the boy has no school and that's, that frees up time, so that's nice. But other than that, it's just uh, I don't like it when it's super hot. I don't like it when it's super sunny. I like a little cloud cover. Like I said earlier, I like nighttime mainly more than anything. And I guess that's one thing I do like about summer is that the nighttime is nice and uh, it's not too chilly or anything. Usually, you know. Even in the Mahai City, it's still fairly, it's nice in the evenings, you know, at night. And I, so I like that. I like that. Because otherwise, most other seasons, it's colder at night. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I dig the nighttime. And I'm just not big on summer. But then I know after summer, fall comes. And fall is by far my favorite season. I love the changing of the, and I know it's kind of a lot of people will, will give fall as the answer. But I really do. I enjoy the color changes. I enjoy the clouds coming in and it's starting to get chilly. I fucking love the month of October. Um, I feel like October is such a great month because usually you got football going on and then basketball and hockey start getting going again. You got Halloween that month. The holiday season is kicking off because, you know, you got Halloween and, and Thanksgiving and Christmas all right in a row. And, you know, it's just that time of year. And and like, and then again, with the outside and the colors changing and it getting a little cold, like, it's just, I love everything about that time of year. I love it. It's absolutely amazing. So, you know, we get through the summer and we get to my favorite time of the year. So I'm good. I'll enjoy the summer while it's here. Like I said, enjoy the time with my, my boys not in school and being able to, you know, take them out and, and, and drench them with water, with our water blasters and water balloons. And, and, uh, you know, cause I'll be honest as much as I love my doing my creative stuff, but I am not one of those dads slash husbands where I, I, you know, like seeing my family, but I don't like spending a whole bunch of time with them. I'd rather be out doing this or that or with my boys or anything like that. No, when I'm not working, 
I like to either be with my wife and kids or working on my creative stuff. And usually the family comes first, unless I have some important, uh, imminent creative shit to get done. But uh, that's just kind of how I roll. That's kind of what I like. I'm a bit of a homebody. And uh, I just do my thing. So I really enjoy being around my wife and kids. So again, that's positive of summer. Got some time with the boys. We're going to have a lot of uh, water fights and we're going to have a good ass summer here. And then, uh, yeah, and then we get into the fall, which I love so much. I love so much. Ah. All right. I've rambled enough. I have no idea how long the pod's going to be. Again, probably probably not super long, but I imagine longer than the one that I had planned for a couple of weeks ago, which I still should have fucking put out anyway. I still should have put out anyway. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Okay. Let's get ready to end this fucking tea party. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, Before we get out of here, I just want to say, I really feel like y'all should check out Space Jam 2 because that comes out Friday. Now, Ben, you know, as you know, if you know, if you're a fan of this show, you know, (laughs) I got got a little bit beef with LeBron James. I've had my ups and downs with him. I was not his biggest fan after the whole Miami thing. It was the decision, the whole thing, the ego in it really. But then I let that shit go and I started rooting for him when he was with Cleveland and he won the championship and then he went to LA and I was cool with all of that. What really got me was the whole China thing when you had um, Daryl Morey, the Daryl Morey, the, I think that's who it was, but it was someone, it was someone associated with the Houston Rockets um, that tweeted out support of Hong Kong and it caused a bunch of shit because NBA makes a bunch of money from China and blah, 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 blah. So, LeBron basically sided with the NBA and China and went against this dude, and which basically went against supporting Hong Kong. And it's fucked up because the Hong Kongians, not so different than, you know, those protesters, not so different than the BLM protesters. And so for him to, uh, you know, fight for his own cause, but then uh, uh, another peoples of similar circumstance uh to to not support them essentially because you make money from china is just some bullshit two-faced uh dumbass shit that i I don't i just don't uh, uh. and it's not just me uh muhammad Muhammad ali's daughter came out and just roasted him for it so a bit of an issue with lebron but i'm gonna put that shit aside to watch space jam 2 because i loved the original and i'll always love mj better than lebron more than lebron i should say but uh, I'm interested to see this movie. And it sounds like they take you through different uh, uh, universes or, you know, different uh, worlds within that universe. I think at the Warner Brothers universe. So that should be interesting. I saw a part where in one of the new trailers was like King Kong. So I might see King Kong for a second. I heard that the Matrix peoples could be in there. It should be interesting. So I suggest give it a watch, especially if you got kids. Sit and watch it with your kids this weekend. It comes out Friday. And uh, we'll probably chat that a little bit next week um do a little space jam 2 review yeah yeah i think that sounds good i think that sounds good all right peeps madcaps let's get the hell out of here let's get the hell out of here let's close up this tea party and you know as always as always much love much love stay safe stay vigilant Stay mad. Because all the best of us are, right? And until next time, have a great week.